Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling in Zimbibo. I am Dr. Abstract, and we are pleased to present Zim 10.5.0 in this bubbling and some of the new things uh, that are around. Let's go take a look at one. The Marquee. So this is Zim Marquee. It's a way that you can present interactive promos and ads in a little uh, marquee thingy like that. I had it paused. Uh, let's, uh, this one has a bunch of things that you can choose. And as soon as I choose one, or as soon as I go in here and start looking around, it will pause the marquee to let the, the person sort of activate this thing. And we can go take a look at model view controller. And then it shows model view controller. And if we unpause, then we're back into the cycling of the promos or the ads. So here comes the next one. This one starts off with an L E A R N. Do, 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 do. Teach code with Zim. I should have let you do that. <laughs> uh, there you go, a little interactive piece. Uh, it had already been cycling, so the initial ad for that or the initial um, animation for this one had happened already and again we would hit play to continue on the cycling so that's optional you don't have you could make it just cycle on through these things there's the original retina and when we had an image of a retina we knew that we wanted to make that interactive which it is so you could interact with that we missed it and then here's a nice noise look at that that's live noise um, using Zim noise and so forth. And now we'll cycle back to, how about this one right here, the retina one, and you can play around with that. So isn't that neat? That's, um, that's uh, Zim Marquee. Let's take a look and see how it works. Here it is, by the way, the same thing. There it is. That's the initial animation of, of this fellow on the main page of Zim. And again, we can play there. Uh, this could be bigger. You're welcome to make it uh, as big as you want, any size uh, that you want, and so forth, and then any number as well, and it will it will start uh, making these things smaller, and you can, uh, we did up to 20 of these things quite easily in this space, and you can click on these to uh, move through it. There it is, Zim Marquee. If you don't want this right-hand marquee, you can specify no right uh, margin, and it will go away. Neat, huh? We that's dragging along a path and what we're doing there is every time we hit a little um, dot like that we're doing a particle emitter on the letters a la Frank Loss this fellow from Holland who um, likes to use particle emitters on letters <laughs> an ode to him <laughs> I like them too all right let's go in and take a look at some code then we'll close this down uh, this is the marquee HTML and we're bringing in the new Zim 10.5.0 stored in a slightly different way in a new CDN. So we're now using Cloudflare to present the CDN versions. Uh, they're in zimjazz.org slash CDN slash 10.5. So we'll put the version numbers there and then always have zimjs for the minified zim and zim underscore doc.js for the full doc version, uh, non-minified version. CreateJS has been put in there along with a new CreateJS. Um, oops, that's the wrong version of that. Uh, sorry about that. That should be 10.2.1. Nope, not even 10 at all. 1.2.0. How does that sound? Go CreateJS, go! and then underscore min. So again, a constant name for CreateJS version. This version of CreateJS is, um, has a couple extra features. The dot, the dot plugin has been turned on, and I think one other feature as well that makes it slightly different than the last version. Uh, the, the, the only version that we've been promoting or whatever uh, of late of uh, CreateJS for the last four years or something like that, three years. But now uh, we've made a change to that. So uh, that should still work. Let's run it. Open in browser. And there she goes. Okay. Super duper. Now 
Let's see, we're also bringing in some marquee code, which we have up here. We'll take a look at that. That's the actual content of the marquee uh, coded in Zim. And here is how we can uh, place the marquee into place. <laughs> It goes right here in this div called marquee down in our HTML content. And then up top here, we say, make the scaling point to that tag. So it'll scale it into that tag 390 by 112 into the tag. We're making the background color of the canvas clear. And with uh, these two assets being loaded, that's one of the, the pictures for the Adobe Shim, Zim Shim there and then we're also setting an outer color to null otherwise that would uh, we don't have to worry about the retina it's doing some testing there which means we don't need the squiggly brackets either or do we no we want a null there so no outer color otherwise that will um, make your background of your HTML page that color so there's no need for that we're bringing the assets in the path there we go. <laughs> we can upload that. Just make sure that uploaded out in the remote site. It did. My, uh, my uploading has been sticking at times. Pain in the neck. All right. So that's Marquee uh, fixed up for us. <laughs> woot woot. <laughs> Live here. In a, what's bubbling is in. <laughs> Even more bubbling than we thought. Still, still bubbling. <laughs> All right. So when we're ready, we are calling the make marquee content that comes from here. This JavaScript file. We'll pop on over and take a peek at that in a sec. So we're making all that that um, the content in Zim, and items will be an array of each item. So every item we make, we put an array, and that's what items is. Here we are calling marquee. Just storing the variable. Uh, a new marquee. There's the size of it. Here's the items array. 8,000 is how many milliseconds each one will show for. We're using a slide parameter and uh, for transition, that is, and how long to transition is 500 milliseconds. To the right, 2020. Hmm, the heck were those? <laughs> 20 and 20. <laughs> what do you think that would be? Uh, oh, that's the margins on the side. So that's how big the margins are. You can play around with that a little bit. If, if we have less things, we could go to 30. I'm not sure. I think it adds on to that. So that means 30, that uh, means an extra 50 on top of 350. We'd be looking at wanting 400 here, not 390. So 400 wide, and we can re view this open in browser. Now it's fatter than the last one. There's the last one where it had only 30 in width here, or was it 20? 20 in width. Now it's got 30 in width, and you see that fits nicely for what we've got going on. I, I just found it a little bit big, so I, I dropped it down. And if we had more, these will get smaller and smaller and smaller until it looks silly with a big pause button. So anyway, that's not what I want. We'll undo that. Uh, but that note that that's how it works. So it's a little bit um, a little bit unusual in that the size that we're giving it here is not the actual size of the marquee, but rather is the size of the content or of the ad or the promo. I found that just a little bit easier. You're making these promos or people make these promos. How big are they? Here's how big they are. But then when we add the margins, we have to watch that we make sure that we scale the the canvas or not scale the canvas, size the canvas to fit all that. Now, you'll figure that out though. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. So we can also load in images. We're going to see that we've got Zim stuff coming in here with the, uh, the list. So we passed in a list of interactive Zim items. But you can also load in marquee data that would look like this, for instance. Uh, right there where that's the name of the image. Uh, there's a path right here. Here would be the path that that image is found. Here's a URL and a target for that URL. So you can make an array of those. Just put, this is called a marquee data object. 
if you throw a bunch of those into an array, you can load a bunch of images. And you can do that along with the, the interactive items. We don't have any images, so there you go. And therefore, we're not loading. We take that marquee, and we center it. And <laughs> the heck, <laughs> don't need the Zim either. So there we go. More uploading. And we'll make sure that uploaded. If it sticks here, it's going to be a blank file up on top. So that seems good. Now, we reduced this initial call so that we didn't have our normal var stage equals frame dot stage var stage width. And so uh, just watch if we did that, there is no stage. There's only a frame, so we sort of shortcutted that, not bothered doing it, and just said frame.stage start update, which we probably don't need anyway because everything that's in the marquee is, uh, you know, being animated and all that kind of stuff. Anyway. So, what is in the marquee, and are you still with us? My apologies, I've sort of been babbling on about all this stuff, but hopefully it's exciting for you. you probably will want to use a marquee. It's one of the uh, classic uses of um, usages. <laughs> one of the classic uses of interactive media out there in the world is to you know, play some banner ads. All right, some interactive banner ads. Woo We've held off this long sort of <laughs> trying to promote or support the the ad industry but there you go some of you may need to do that for a job uh, who knows it is a little bit different what we're doing here with the zip banners uh, let's go and take a look at the code here for the marquee js it's right here so we've thrown this all in one function called make marquee and we're uh, we passed in the frame and here we are specifying our stage, stage width, and stage height, where we're actually probably going to use them. And then what we've got is each one of these things is a new item. So there's the 10 add for showing what's new in Zim 10. We're making a new container for that and throwing that into a function. So I'll give you an overview here. There's the learn add, and we do the same thing, make a container and throw that into a function. There's the Adobe Shim add, and we do the same thing. We throw that into a function, promo, quit ads. There's the Retina example, same deal. Throw it in, or put it in a container, throw it in a function. And then after those content areas, here we are saying, oh, now let's return an array of these things. Those are our containers that hold the ads. And that's what gets sent or put into the marquee. You have a choice in the marquee to keep those in this order. You have to turn mix colon false off. Uh, by default, mix is true. I think that's probably better just because every time you load the page, if it always is in the same order, the first ad is going to get larger you know, views or whatever. <laughs> so if you just sort of, we, what we do is when the page loads, we scramble it. And then after that, it keeps that same order. So it just cycles through that scrambled order. And every time the page loads, it scrambles it to a different order. That's, that's the default. If you don't want that, you set mix in the marquee and set mix to false. So there they are. And then within here, we don't need to go through all of this stuff, although it's, it's kind of exciting. We've made, what is it, four cute little interactive features some more interactive than others. And uh, it's neat how we've made some of them, so you're welcome to look through that. But in general, what we're doing is we're making that container, as mentioned, and then we're adding the assets to the container, the stuff to the container, which happens to be a couple lists this time that are going to various URLs. So there's the couple lists being added. And then we made some logo in the middle or whatever. Now, one thing to note is this part here. We said when we mouse down on the two lists, so these are the two lists, list one, list two, when we mouse down on them, we're going to pause the marquee. So 10 happens to be this container. And every container, once it's added to uh, the marquee, every, not every container, once the item or the content is added to the marquee, it gets a marquee property. 
this mouse down is obviously going to happen after it's been added to the marquee. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> At the moment, this code maybe maybe hasn't been added to the marquee, but uh, by the time we mouse down on it, don't worry, it will be added to the marquee. So 10.marquee.pause true will pause that. As a matter of fact, I think pausing true is default, so we wouldn't really need those. We could just say pause the marquee. And that's why the marquee doesn't sort of move along while you're in the middle of scrolling on these things. So I think that's a good thing. Now, if you want to deal with that in different ways, you can. You could then say, all right, well, once you mouse down, I'm going to give you another mm, three, three or 10 seconds or five seconds or whatever, and then I'm going to turn that marquee back on. So you could just set a timeout here to turn the marquee back on if you want. You know, that kind of thing. So it's up to you how to... Okay. Each, each item as well gets or can have a function assigned to it uh, to a marquee on property. So this is, you, you make this up, marquee on. If you pass in a function, what happens is a marquee, anytime it changes pages, as soon as it's arriving at a page, it will run whatever's in that page's marquee on, uh, page, item, whatever. Um, add <laughs> it's the thing and this one's called 10. So there's a marquee on which means that we can start things. So what we're doing is animating those lists as soon as it comes on. There is uh, also the, the speed of the what's it called the transition so you have to take that into account. So we're waiting a little bit. We're waiting the speed of the transition and then we're animating these things. There's also a marquee off, which we didn't see there, but let's scroll down to the next one, whatever this one was. This was the animation along a path and stuff, dragging along a path, resetting, and here's the marquee on for that one, and here's the marquee off for that one. So when, when that marquee finishes, we put we added back a certain event um, to make it start. And the next time it comes, it you know it's handled properly. So this marquee off will be called when the the item leaves the marquee. All right, and I think that's all we really wanted to show you there is that we have some controls available for us um, on these items that have been added to the, the marquee. We can access the marquee, we can pause it or start it again, and we can, we can call functions when it arrives and when it leaves. Cool, uh, but yeah, come on into here and see how we built these things and try out a marquee for yourself. Let us know how it goes. Uh, this has been a What's Bubbling at Zimbiblo. I am Dr. Abstract, and we've got a few more things to show you in upcoming captures of what else is new in Zim 10.5.0. Remember, we're also working on a new CDN there, the zimjs.org. That's nice. I can read that. The, the, the one out at Amazon CloudFront was this long, <laughs> ugly, ugly URL. And what was happening is we're now into the millions of views a, a week, and Amazon is starting to um, charge us. <laughs> so we moved to Cloud. Uh, Cloudflare and hopefully everything will be good there. A lot of libraries are there and uh, that's the deal. All of the CDN stuff for Amazon in the, is in the past. We're still keeping around so don't worry about that. Your files will still work. All right. Ciao for now. We'll see you later. And if you've made it this far on this uh, What's Bubbling, please make sure that you come in and hang out with us at the zimjs.com slash Slack channel, Slack. And uh, come on in and say hi. We're all friendly and happy. We'd love to see you there. Ciao.